Greetings, students. My name is Mr. Torgerson. Uh, sorry that we can't meet in person and that we can't be, uh, you know, in class together. But we're going to try to explain the notes this way. Uh, if this doesn't work out, we'll try something different. Uh, we're working together as a team, Mrs. Brown and Mrs. Morissette and I. So hopefully this will work out. So we're going to go through part one of algebraic expressions today. And uh, each day we'll do a different teacher. We'll explain the lesson for each uh, particular lesson in the notebook. And uh, you'll be responsible for writing down in your notebook or printing them off and writing them down on that, all the things that we're putting into the notes so that you can have a uh, reference and so that you can help hopefully understand the material well. Anyways, let's begin. So vocabulary today, part uh, one, algebraic expressions. You will evaluate an expression, this is the key word here, if you substitute a number for each variable in the expression. Then simplify using the order of operations. Every number of variable or the product of a number and uh, one or more variables is known as a term. So again, terms are numbers with variables or just variables. Every variable does have a number, even if it's just a n, it's one n. The coefficient is the number. Co e efficient. Of a term and a constant is a quantity whose value does not change. Think of numbers. Not necessarily whole numbers or constants, just whole numbers, but any number is a constant. For example, pi is a constant, even though it is irrational. What terms, uh, what, when terms have the same variable raised to the same power, they are called like terms. This is something you've gone over in Algebra 1 and in Algebra 2 again. We're just reviewing for these first few lessons, for these first few lessons, um, what, uh, what the items are. All right, so here's some examples. Write an algebraic expression for each phrase. The difference of seven and four. Difference means subtract. Now, this does not mean subtract in the wrong, in the, in the opposite order. It just means subtract. So this is seven, seven minus four. Now, if the keyword was less than, then we would do something else. That's coming up on letter F. The product of three and X. This means to multiply. Now, I prefer just to put the items next to each other. Three X. That is three times X or 3 multiplied by x. A number, the number y increased by 2. This is y plus 2. Now, uh, now addition is commutative, so it wouldn't matter the order here. This is the proper order for increased by. If it was more than y more than 2, then we would do something else. But uh, again, addition is commutative, so it doesn't particularly matter the order here. I don't usually take off if it's the wrong order. The quotient of 48 and 3, this means divide, and it means divide in the order provided. 48 divided by 3, not the other way around. The number n is doubled, then decreased by 1. All right, so n is doubled, 2 times n, and then it's decreased by 1, minus 1. 5 less than w. This keyword less than, it does not say is less than, it says less than. Is less than has an equal sign because is is equal. The less than is simply subtract. W minus 5. So this is different from is less than. So it's not is less than. If it was is less than, then we would do less than, the less than symbol. But since it's just less than, we do subtraction. And again, this is the opposite order of subtraction. What I was talking about on letter A, W comes first here. So we take W and subtract 5. 5 less than W. 2 times the sum of A and B. So we're going to add A and B. Sum of A and B. Sum means add first. A plus B. And then double. So this means add first. In other words, it means put parentheses. It means you have to have parentheses around it for it to work out. The inverse of a number, inverse does not mean reciprocal. It means opposite. Inverse is opposite. Keyword inverse, opposite. If you want to call it that. So the inverse of a number, the opposite of a number, in other words, 
increase by its absolute value. Add that to absolute value symbols, straight bars. All right, next one, the, diff the absolute value of the difference of two numbers. So it doesn't tell us what the two numbers are, so we're just going to subtract two random numbers, A and B, and then take the absolute value. This would be how far the numbers are apart on a number line, or the distance between two numbers on a number line, two scalars. For example, 7 and 4 are 3 apart. Whether you look at the 4 first or the 7 first, it's still 3 apart. 7 is 3 more than 4, 4 is 3 less than 7. They're 3 apart in distance. So again, this means, this difference means subtract first and then do the absolute value. That's what this means. All right, the inverse of the absolute value of try some number. So again, the inverse means the opposite, negated, in other words. So if it's positive, it becomes negative. If it's negative, it becomes positive. Of the absolute value of twice some number. So twice some number. You can use any variable here, n, a, or b. I've been kind of varying my letters on these ones here. So I will, crease, I will use n here. I will uh, use n. The absolute value of 2n, negated. All right, so we do the absolute value before we inverse it. So this will always be negative. This will always be positive. I is always positive. J is always negative. Upwards. All right, so there's page one. The pages on mine are in the bottom corner here. I am printing mine off manually because it's easier to do it like uh, print it off like this. But you should have it binded together. So that was page one. Moving on to page two. Converting expressions into words. So this is backwards of what we just did on page one. On page one, we took the words and made them into expressions. Now we're going to make the expressions into words. So this one, 5n minus 1. You could say this lots of different ways. You can say it the way it's written here. 5 times a number, subtract 1. You could also say 1 less than 5 times a number. Let's write it that way. So we can use that keyword less than. 1 less than 5 times a number. Now, if I were to test on this particular concept, there would be multiple answers to this type of question. For example, two. For example, one, there's only one proper answer. For all the ones from example one, there's only one answer for these. Only one proper answer. But for these, there can be multiple answers. Like I said before, it could be 5 times n minus 1. It could be 5 times n subtract 1. It could be this, 1 less than 5 times a number. So just keep that in mind. If you don't have what's written here, exactly the same as I have what's written, that's not a problem. As long as it's properly written, which you can verify by asking a friend, please. Text and ask a friend in the class. Or looking it up online, asking a question on any of the many websites that you can answer math questions on. Or if you have a last resort, ask me. Email me and I'll, and I'll respond, of course. All right, same thing here. We can do 2 times n plus 3, or we can do, let's use that keyword more than, 3 more than twice a number, or 2 times a number. All right, so here we have a quantity, x plus 7. So we want to make sure that we do that x plus 7 before we do divided by 2. So if we say x plus 7 divided by 2, that signifies only the 7 is dividing by 2. That's not what we want to do. We want to do the whole thing, x plus 7 divided by 2. So you can say that multiple ways. You can say, like I said before, the quantity of x plus 7 divided by 2. Or you could also say, like this, half the sum of, and you could say a number and 7, or you could say x plus 7. We we'll use the word a number. A number and 7. So again, that number, we don't know what that number is. Now notice I use the, the, uh, the Arabic numeral here instead of the uh, spelling it out word. That's fine too. On these other ones, I didn't use that. I spelled out the, uh, the number. But you can use the uh, 
Hindu Arabic numeral if you want. That's fine too. All right, so here again, we want to do the x plus 8 before we times it by 3. So if we say 3 times x plus 8, that signifies 3x plus 8, not 3 times the quantity x plus 8. So we can use the word quantity if we want to. Or again, we can use that keyword sum. 3 times the sum. of x and 8, or 8 in a number. Now again, addition is commutative, so I could put this in either order. Subtraction, it matters. If I say half the sum of a number in 7, it's different than saying half the sum of 7 in a number. This can be the difference. If I say half the sum of, an, of the difference of a number in 7, it's different, it's different than saying half the difference of 7 in a number. But, you know, addition is commutative, so these two could be in either order, the number in the 7, the number in the 8, because we're adding. All right, so here we're doing the opposite of 6 squared, which we also called the inverse of 6 squared. You could say that either way. So I'll use the word opposite here. I'm reading my notes from last year, so I'm using the, the words I used last year for these. So if you're confused on why I changed the, the words around, it's because it can be changed. And I don't want to state just one particular way it could be done when there's multiple ways you could have been taught this. And it's going to be fine if you write it the opposite of 6 squared or the inverse of 6 squared. All right. Now here, we want to square, af we want to square it after it's been negated, the number. So we could say the quantity negative 6 squared or simply negative 6 squared. All right, so um, I'm going to use the keyword quantity. The quantity simply means parentheses. So if you see parentheses, it's always appropriate to use quantity, the keyword quantity. Negative 6 squared. So if you're, if you're a little bit um, iffy on the parentheses, you can always use the word quantity for that. So 3 times the quantity of x plus 8 would work there on another d. You can always use that keyword quantity, and it always signifies parentheses. If you don't want to use one of the other words that signifies parentheses, like the keyword sum or the keyword difference. All right. All right, next thing, model a situation with an expression. So this is just real-life models. What's going on with the model? So we had 150 bucks, but we're spending $2 each day. So we have 150 so $150, you don't have to use the dollar symbol if you don't want to here. $150, we're taking away $2 per day. $2, now the, key, now the variable for day can be D, or it can be the word day. So we're taking away $2, now you can use the letter D here if you want, or you can use the D-A-Y, day. I'll use D, and I'll write here on the side that this means day. All right, so we have 150 bucks. We're spending two bucks a day. The two bucks a day could be for anything. It could be for candy, for chocolates, whatever. You know, something from the vending machine, something cheap, something less expensive. I should say, not cheap, less expensive. Next one. We start with 15 bucks. So we have 15 dollars. And again, you don't have to use the dollar symbol if you don't want to. We're adding to that eight dollars per week. We're adding to that eight dollars. I'm going to use W for week. Again, I'm going to write off on the side, that means weeks. So if it was, for example, four weeks, we would have 15 plus 8 times 4. If it was five weeks, we'd have 15 plus 8 times 5. All right. Similar thing here. If it was 10 days, we'd have 150 minus 2 times 10. $150 minus 2 times 10, which is $20. All right. You receive your regular salary. So whatever my regular salary is, plus a 5% bonus. So here's my salary. We're going to use the letter, we can use S if we want to use salary. I hate using S because I can't do S's properly. I always look like fives. And if you want to look at the, uh, and, and then I'll show you the notes later on with the other person's letters, and it looks like fives too. S's always look like fives. So I'm going to use money, M. This is my salary. This is what I get paid. Salary, again, is, is what you get paid. Some people get hourly salary. This person gets regular salary plus 
So they're obviously working commission job, some sort of commission. Plus, how do we do 5%? Well, the key thing about percentages is they are decimals in equations. So when I'm using a percent in an equation, I write the decimal version, which moves it, the, which moves it over two times the number place. So 5% is 0 and 5 hundredths. 5 out of 100. 5%. Five percent. percent means out of 100. So this is 5 hundredths. If it was 20%, it would be 20 hundredths, which would be 0 0.20. 20 after the decimal point. If it was 10%, it would be 0 0.10, 10 hundredths. 10%, 10, 10 hundredths. This is the hundredth place, this is the tenth place. So we have my salary, M, plus 5% of it. Again, M is my salary. I'm going to take 5% of my salary. So, for example, if my salary was 1000 a month, 1000 a month would be this. What's 5% of 1000 That's 50 bucks. How did I get that? I moved the decimal left twice and multiplied by 5. That's how you work with percentages. So my total wage would be $1,050. If I got a 5% bonus of my $1,000, would be $1,050. All right, next one. Your cell phone plan allows 750 text messages, and you text 25 messages per day. So here's my phone plan. It allows 750 messages. I'm going to do 25 per day. I'm taking away from those messages 25 per day. These are my messages per day. So after 10 days, I've used 250 messages. I have 500 left. After 20 days, I've used double that, 500. So now I have 250 left. And after 30 days, I've used all my messages. So on the 31st day, I'm going to go over 25 messages. Hopefully, I can take them from the previous months because some months have 31 days, some months have 30, some months have 28, 29, sometimes in February. So that's what this is modeling. My messages left over after X amount of days. Next items. All right, so that's this. Uh, again, with these, there's multiple answers for example two. For example three, there can be multiple variables. You don't have to use the variable D, W, M, or D here. But the equation, the expression, sorry, not equation, doesn't have an equal sign. The expression should be the same for everybody. Now, just, uh, just for example, I'm going to show you this. These always look like fives to me. I didn't write this one either. Those will always look like fives when you use the letter S as a variable. I don't care if you use the letter S, but to me they always look like fives. Here's a five and an S next to each other. And I, I just, just looks so similar to me. That's why I never use the variable S. Anyways. You can if you want, though. I'll usually tell the difference. I can tell the difference. It just bugs me. Irritating to me. All right, next item. Evaluate the expressions. We're going to substitute these uh, numbers in for the variables. Now, when we substitute in we always use parentheses. So when we say evaluate its expression, always substitute with parentheses. So when we're saying b is being squared here, if b was negative, it would be the quantity negative 5 squared. It would be positive 25. So I'm just going to use parentheses around everything while I'm doing this. Just to have you guys understand, you don't have to do this when you're doing your homework yourself. Most of you understand the concept of this. Negative 2 again, and then positive 3. So this is 25. These two, multiplication again is commutative. So it can do 4 times 2 times 3, 3 times 2 times 4. Whichever order is easier for you, there are two minus signs here, so this becomes a plus. If there were three negative signs, if three was negative, it would, be, it would stay a minus. Sorry about the lights. It's going to do that now and then. This little. All right, so it's two negatives, so it becomes a plus. So that would be positive eight times three. 25 plus four, uh, 24 is 49. So I write the equal sign at the very end after I finish the. Uh, Expression after I've equal after I finish it out. All right, next thing x. So x is three. 
Again, you don't have to use the parentheses here if you understand what you're doing here properly. 3 squared and then negative 4. Squaring comes before multiplication. So uh, I didn't need that parenthesis at the start. 3 squared is 9 times negative 4. Again, two negative signs here becomes a plus. 3 plus 36. This is 39. All right, next item here. 2. 6 squared. Not 6 squared is 36. So I can actually, I'm going to start maybe not writing everything out, but just writing out what I think maybe you need to have, the minimal on this question. So 6 squared is 36. So I can square that because parentheses, then exponents, multiply, divide, add, subtract. And then this is an exponent inside a parentheses, so that's why we're doing it first. It's inside the parentheses. And then this is negative 3 quantity squared, so this is positive 9. But it's negative because it's negative in the front. So I was asked a couple times last year why that's minus 9 and not plus 9. I was asked many times in my other classes. So again, what we're talking about here with this, that negative 3 is being squared, becomes positive, and then it's the opposite. So this is the opposite or the inverse of negative 3 squared. In other words, this here, this y squared, is negative 3 squared with a negative in the front. These two negatives don't cancel here because the square comes first. The square comes first because it's exponents before multiplication. So this is why this is minus 9. That's why that's minus 9 instead of plus 9. Alright. All right, so 36 minus 9 is a uh, in a long summer, guys. Sorry. It's 27, though. Now, here, when I divide, I don't have to divide the 2 by the 3. I can divide the 27 by the 3 and then multiply by 2. So this is 2 times 9 is 18. And again, you're welcome to use a calculator for any of the material today, uh, any of the material in college prep. So I didn't state that at the start, but if any of these are giving you problems, you can use a calculator all year long on the questions uh, to help you out with the with the test questions. Um, there's various options available online that we'll, we'll have posted on our websites. Mrs. Brown, Mrs. Morissette and I. So you'll be able to use a calculator if you want to use one for the test. It's not going to be no calculator for the majority of the tests. There, will, there might be some questions when you come back in second semester where we'll require you to do them without a calculator. Alright, so there's page two. Here's page three. All right, so simplify x question. This means combine like terms. So anything with the same letter combines together. Here's a concept here. So in other words, 8m and 11m, they have the same letter. It's 19m. And then 7 minus 13 has the same letter. That's minus 6. That's negative because the uh, 7 is smaller in absolute value then the, um, what was I going to say, the 13. Let me see if I can find my highlighters. There they are. So here, this is in the simplest form. The squareds, it is the common power, but it's different variables. So that's in the simplest form. It can't be simplified. Nothing you can do with that one. All right, here I'm going to distribute the 7 to the 3 and then minus 4. It's going to become negative 16m plus 21m minus 28. So my common terms are the m's. Negative 16m plus 21m. So I'll highlight the common terms here. These two are the common terms. Now, as 21 is larger in aptitude value than 16, so when those subtract, it becomes positive 5m. Positive 5m minus 28. Again, what I'm talking about here is the bigger absolute value, you keep it sign. 21 has bigger absolute value than 16. Keep that in its sign. All right, next item, we're going to distribute again. 20x squared minus 10 minus 16 plus 8x squared. So again, these two 20x squared, 8x squared, 
they have a common variable with the same power. So they're both x squared and they both have, or excuse me, they're both x squared with a, co with a coefficient. So those two combine, they add together because they're both positive 20 plus positive 8 squared. So that is 28x squared. And then the other ones here, negative 10 minus 16, that's minus 36. Why I subtract? Well, because same signs add, these are both minus. Minusing 10, minusing 16, 36, 26. Again, it's been a long summer, guys. Minus 10, minus 16, minus 26 is what I meant to put here. 2, 6. Dos seis. Veinte seis. Alrighty. Next item. So what are my terms? What are my coefficients? What is my constant here? My terms are my whole things. So there's a 2x squared. There's an x squared term of 2. There's a minus 3x. In other words, there's an x term of minus 3. And there's a 5. There's a constant term of 5. So my constant is 5. My coefficients are 2, which is in front of the x squared, and minus 3, which is in front of the x. Next item, my terms here. Negative 4, yx, 8x, and then minus 3 or negative 3. So again, this yx is different from an x term because it's got y and x as its variable. Now I say variable when in fact there's two letters there. That's what we talk about here. All right, yx is the term here, a multivariable term, a y and an x. All right, the coefficients here are negative 4 and 8, and the constant is minus 3 or negative 3. All right, write an expression that models the following thing. The freshman class sell pinwheels for peace as a fundraiser. That part's not really important. Just add to the question is all. What is the total income? So we're looking for income. Income is equal to, we want our total income, after buying materials from an office supply company for a flat fee of $86, and they sell the pinwheels for $2 each. So this is a negative item, a flat fee. This is how much we're paying. It's not, a, it's not how much we're getting. It's a flat fee of $86. So in other words, that is a minus from our income. That's coming off of our income. This is a positive part to the income. We sell for $2 each. So this is negative. The flat fee of $86. This is positive. Sell them for two dollars each. This is positive. So we're going to sell them for two dollars each. So two times. You can use any variable here you prefer. Two times x. Take away our flat fee of eighty-six bucks. Now x again represents pinwheels sold. This is how many we sold. All right, there's page three of our notes. I know this has been a little bit here. So our last thing is going to be page four, and then we'll be done with one one. Sorry, this one's a longer video. The other ones coming up will be quite a bit shorter. All right, so last one for, last one for uh, this lesson. All right, the definition of subtraction. These are um, properties. When you take A and subtract B, that's the same as taking A and adding the opposite of B. Subtraction is adding the opposite. Definition of division. When you that's the same as taking A times the reciprocal of B. This is not the inverse. This is the reciprocal of B, provided that B does not equal zero. As long as B is not zero. Because you can't divide by zero, so you don't have an answer there if B is zero, because you can't divide by zero. All right, distributive property for subtraction. If you take A and multiply it by two other letters subtracted, it's the same as multiplying and then subtracting. This is simply the distributive property, it just applies for subtraction as well as addition. 
Multiplication by zero. Zero is commutative. Zero times A is the same as A times zero, and it's zero. Anything multiplied by zero is zero. Multiplication by negative one. Negative one times A, or A times negative one, is the opposite of A, or the inverse of A. The opposite of A plus B is the same as if you take the opposite of A and add the opposite of B. Now notice here I didn't put A in parentheses, that's because it's not required to put A in parentheses here. However, if you wanted to, you could. Parentheses around the negative A, parentheses around the negative B, that's fine. You could also write negative A minus B. All right, the opposite of difference. The opposite of A minus B is when you distribute this negative, it becomes the opposite of A and then it becomes a positive B. Or you could say it's B minus A. The opposite of product, the opposite of A times B, is the opposite of A times B. Like this. Or the opposite of A times B like this. This can be useful if A or B are negative. So if A was negative, we would make it positive, A times positive B. If B was negative, we'd make it positive B times positive A. Again, if only one of them was negative. If both of them was negative, we'd cancel out the negative in the parentheses, then put the negative in, in the end. All right, the opposite of an opposite is the original. The negation of a negation is the original. All right, so that concludes this uh, lesson of notes. Um, again, if you, as a student, have questions on this, please ask your teacher during the designated days when they're going to go over the notes with you. And um, please don't stress too much about this. If you're not understanding, ask questions. We're trying to help you out here. Anyways, good luck. I hope we have a good year.